Welcome to Consumer Law Studio, presented by South Carolina Legal Services. Bringing you interviews of voices and faces from the consumer law scene in South Carolina and around the nation. Today, Susan Ingalls interviews attorney Brian Boger, the state representative for the National Association of Consumer Advocates. Hello, I'm here with Brian Boger, who is an attorney in Columbia, South Carolina. And Brian is the state chairman for NACA, the National Association of Consumer Advocates. Brian, tell us a little bit about what NACA does and how you got involved in well, that organization. Well, thanks, Susie. I'd love to tell you. Um, when I started focusing on consumer law back in 2002 and 2003, I kept looking for lawyers to help me, uh, just if nothing else, to have a conversation like you and I have been having today. And, and those conversations were rare, if, if at all. So I kept hearing about a group called the National Association of Consumer Advocates, and, and I finally wrote them and asked them could I join and they and I'm proud of this they did not just say send us some money and you're in which is they, as you know many organizations are like that right. they wanted to to make sure that I was that I had the heart of a consumer and and that was what I was doing for a living and uh, a wonderful woman by the name of Sue Berkowitz who you know uh, uh, vouched yes. for me. And Sue is uh, the executive director of South Carolina Appleseed, is that right? That's correct. And she and I knew, knew each other in, in, in our work, and uh, she vouched for me and, and sent them a nice email. Whatever she did, she must have said something nice about me because they let me in. <laughs> um, but every year, and by the way, that's naca.net, okay. if you look it up on the web, and you can, you can uh, meaning the public can can find a lawyer. You can find one in Arizona, Alabama, wherever you're looking, uh, by checking on that website, and it'll check a check a little box that says "Find a Lawyer," and you'll find the the lawyers in that state. And you'll find, I think, even today, very few South Carolina lawyers that right. on that um, on that website. Um, but you know, that's that's the state of the 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 world. Most lawyers like. Uh, uh, representing clients who can pay, <laughs> and and you know, Susie, you and I, uh, quite frankly, are maybe a little different. We we like clients that can pay, but we sure enjoy the work we do in helping consumers across South Carolina. I agree. Um, and and as you and I know, we're you and I are on the mortgage um, division of of NACA, and we have uh, um, NACA has annual seminars. They're closely associated with the National Consumer Law Center, and you and I know we've been to those seminars every every November. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the educational piece that I look forward to every year, and I learn so much at those uh, at those seminars. It makes my it makes the year uh, that much better because I get such an education there. Those mm -hmm. are terrific programs they put on. And you know, talk a little bit about that conference and the other. Um, attorneys who are there from across the country and kind of the collaboration that goes on. You're right. Talking about cases. You are, you are so right. The first time that I went to a, a NCLC, National Consumer Law Center, seminar conference was in Oakland, California. And I tell people this all the time. It was like meeting all of the family that you like in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I mean stressing the family you like. Yes. <laughs> You know, because they were all there, and I've just felt so welcomed mm -hmm. by them and the community uh, across the country. I and mean, we have people from Alaska to, to, to you know, Miami, to, mm -hmm. from Hawaii to Portland, Maine, yeah. who come and, and teach and, and learn and listen, and you find that you, you feel so sometimes alone, don't we, Susie? Yes. There's such a small group of us in South Carolina doing this work. That's right. And you feel so alone, and then to see um, 800 people at a seminar that are like-minded and they have the same experiences that you've had, it really it, it uh, sort of validates your 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 work, what mm -hmm. you do for a living, and, and and you're not so alone. It's really nice. Right. 
That's great. Tell me, what are sort of the hot topics in the consumer law field that NACA is um, focusing on right now? Yeah, they, there, are, there are many. Um, of course, you and I know we've chatted, we're in the mortgage area. There are others, something called the Fair Credit Reporting Division. There's also the Fair Debt Collections Practices people, and then there's the people that handle car matters, uh, mm -hmm. automobile cases. But for me... I think the next hot topic is going to be the fair debt collections practices area mm -hmm. uh, because we're already seeing it. And I don't know if you are, Susie, but um, we are seeing cases. We have one this week that has come in where my client settled with a bank. Well, I will not use their name. And now three months later, they've gotten a letter from that bank saying they owe money. And the case has been settled, resolved with a signed release. And we wrote, uh, under the law, the Consumer uh, uh, Affairs Office here, and the bank said, no, they owe the money. So, so it's left hand, right hand, not mm -hmm. knowing which is which is which one is doing. And we're seeing that. And you're settling with someone who maybe didn't have authority or just the records aren't there. The records aren't there. And, and we're seeing this uh, under the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, debt buying is huge, mm -hmm. where these where if the bank sold your mortgage debt or certainly credit card debt and you thought you paid it or you did pay it and now they're saying you owe something more or or, or you didn't pay it at all, those are, those are things I'm really looking at very carefully now. Mm -hmm. And now the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act covers uh, companies or entities that are collecting the debts of someone else. That's correct. correct. But now our South Carolina Consumer Code has similar provisions, but they also apply to companies collecting their own debts. That's, is that right? That's correct. It's a really, it's a great question, Susie. Um, under our, and I know this by heart, it's chapter 37-5 <laughs> yeah. in our code, yeah. dash 101 through, you know, 110, um, because I, I look at that statute almost weekly. It says, unlike the FDCPA, under the Federal Act, it says that a creditor can be a, can be sued mm -hmm. for pursuing a debt um, in a in a manner that's not acceptable, and, and, and there are several things meaning not acceptable, like calling you twenty times a day or mm -hmm. threaten you know profane language, um, things of that nature. Right. I'm not going to go through all of those things, but it's different than the federal act because the federal act only says that you can sue if a debt collector is contacting you. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. We have got a good act. Yeah. We, uh, would you say that South Carolina is a somewhat consumer-friendly state? In some respects, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For example, we don't have garnishment of wages right. in South Carolina, and most states do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we have a, um, a strong, uh, you know, although you and I have talked about how not many, there's not many consumer lawyers, but we have some good, strong consumer statutes that help our, our citizens. Mm -hmm. And so is that something that NACA looks at, maybe recruiting uh, more members? And is that part of what you do as a state chairman, try to um, you know, increase the number of consumer lawyers in our state or the activity that they have in the area? I wish I could say that I've been a very, a very successful state chair in getting <laughs> more people to join, but not so much yeah. it's it's uh we're still fighting the uphill battle there mm -hmm. but I, you know i think in the next several years uh if i have anything to do with it we're going to see a change mm -hmm. and those statutes can probably help i mean they you know you can get trouble damages attorney's fees and so it is something that um uh, people with lower income or inability to pay a lawyer could get a lawyer because the lawyer knows if it is a legitimate case that there's a good chance that their fee will be paid. That's right. So. And, and I think we're seeing um, more young lawyers now sort of leaning toward this area. At least the people who work for me here mm -hmm. um, seem to enjoy it. And, and I, didn't, I didn't see that many years ago. So cool. that's, that's a positive. Well, um, can you give us that NACA website again before we... Uh, sure, it's naca.net. Okay. And just uh, go to the web. It's very easy to use. Click on Find a Lawyer. Click on you know, Conferences, Hot Topics, as mm -hmm. you suggested. They have, like, public education materials where you can find information. They do. Okay. 
it's just terrific. All right. Well, very good. And what about you? How would people contact you if they were looking for a consumer lawyer and couldn't find one, which sounds like it does probably happen a lot to people. Can it you does. give us your website? Sure. It's, uh, it's just Brian Boger, triple W, Brian Boger, and you'll, it's Brian with an I, B-O-G-E-R. And uh, you'll find my web information there, and we're pretty easy to find. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll wish you luck in your uh, ongoing endeavors on behalf of consumers in South Carolina. Thank you so much, Susie.